my friend and I were on the phone the other day and he was saying that he's been looking at economists and what they're saying about what's happened in the past, what's happening now and what might happen in the future. We got laughing because a lot of economists can tell you in the future why something happened in the past, but not so great sometimes at projecting what's going to happen in the future. And we talked about, and I know for me, I've re really been able to think about what's my past been like and what is it like now and what might it be like in the future. And it's not about the economy and it's not about money and it's not about possessions. It's about spiritual fitness and trusting. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Kevin Barheide here. Thanks for tuning in. As you can tell, I'm not in the studio. The studio is in the basement. The basement's a wreck. The house is really kind of a mess. And this is my bedroom. This is my whole world right now. This is my bedroom. It's where I am working. It's my office. This chair is where I spend almost all of my day. And when I get up out of it, everything snaps, crackles, and pops because my, my bones aren't made for this. But I'm doing the best I can, and we're all hanging in there. I've been here for about a month, and it's getting a little stir-crazy. But when I think about the things that I'm most conscious of right now, a lot of what I have to look at now is not so much where I'll be financially, although that's important. It's not so much where I'll be monetarily or possessions or job-wise or stability-wise. It's where am I going to be as a person? And even more importantly, where am I going to be as a spiritual person? Not just tomorrow, but the next day and the next day and the next day. Over these past days and weeks, what I've been really wanting to look at is what are the trends and track records in my life that I can look at that'll give me some kind of a sense of where I'm going to go, what my life is going to be like moving forward. And I do have a track record and I can see some trends in my life. I can look back 34 years ago to when I first got sober. It was the 1980s, 1986. We were in the middle of the AIDS epidemic and the world seemed upside down. There was a crack epidemic. The world seemed to be falling apart. It was one of the hardest times people would stay to get clean and sober. In 2000, when I was nearing the end of what I would term my dry drunk, I hadn't been going to meetings, I hadn't been caring for myself spiritually. And then in 2001, I finally, finally hit bottom and I got back into the rooms and I started working the 12 steps and working with my sponsor. And just when things were getting, getting good, just after about 90 days, 9-11 hit. What I'm finding that is true for all of those times, for the 1980s, for 2001, for 2020, is that it's not about what I can do, it's about what we can do. It's not about how I made it through that, it's about how we made it through that. And what's been important to me is recognizing that the track record that's been true through all of that is that my trend is that I do okay, but not when I'm alone. When I try to do it on my own, when I try to hold up under my own strength, I crumble and fall. Not only do I crumble and fall, sometimes I make things worse. But the other track record and the other trend is that when I reach out for help from other people, when I reach out for help from the people that I trust in my life, that tends to lift me up, that gives me more options, it gives me more strengths, it gives me more of an understanding of how I can make it through these days and how I can make it through and learn from these times. How do I learn maybe how to be more of the person I want to be, to meditate more, to be more calm, to be more giving, to be more forgiving. But one of the biggest track records that I've really had to look at over these past days, and I was thinking about it today, it's not my track record. And it's not the track record of the people in my life, although we all do this together and we're very strong. It's the track record of my higher power. When I was early in sobriety and just trying to get my head together, I remember going to a meeting one night and it was terrible. It was terrifying. I, I felt like I couldn't hold on another second. I just needed a drink so bad and I didn't know who to tell. I didn't know what to say. I didn't think that I could sit in my own skin one more minute. And I remember I was at a meeting at the clubhouse in Schenectady at a midnight meeting and I couldn't, I couldn't sit in my seat and I walked out. And as I walked out the door, I stood out there standing on the sidewalk waiting for somebody to chase after me. Someone to run out the door and say, are you okay, are you okay? And nobody came. They're not supposed to. But I got in my car and I felt dead inside. And I drove 
back to my, my home. And I didn't even want to go in the house. And I sat in the, in the street, in the car, parked in the car. And I didn't know where to go. I didn't want to go back to the meeting. I didn't want to go in the house. And my heart was pounding. And I just said, I'll just sit here and read. And I had a book with me. And I turned on the overhead light and I opened the book where the bookmark was. And I never read a, never read a, a word of the book. And I, I sat there in the car and I, and I just read the bookmark. But it wasn't until I got to the end that it really, it really broke me in two. My precious child, I love you. And I would never, ever leave you. During your times of trial and suffering, when you see only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. And I cried. And I cried and I cried and I cried because I realized that even in that moment, sitting in that car at one o'clock in the morning, needing a drink, needing comfort, needing something, needing somebody, I had nothing. I had nothing I could rely on. I didn't have a drink in my hand. I didn't have an ounce of strength in my body or my mind to even carry on. And I had no one around me that was going to pick me up and come running out to take care of me. No one was there. And I recognized, but somebody was there. I was being carried in that moment. And I recognized that I had been carried many days in the past. And over the days past that, over the rest of the 80s and then into the 90s, I knew that I held on to that. I knew that my higher power had me, was carrying me, was there by my side, was there in me, was around me, was guiding me, was ahead of me and over me and loving me and caring for me. And I've recognized that again and again, time and time again, that trend has proved true. That track record has been perfect. And so when I look at the trends and the track record and I think, how do I project that forward? How do I project that into the future? I don't even have to. And that's the trick for me. It's not about projecting into the future. It's not about trying to plan what will happen. No matter what we do, I know that there's nothing that I can or can't do, nothing that we can or can't do that my higher power, our higher power won't carry us through, won't carry me through. And I trust that. I know that wherever I go, wherever I am, even sitting in this chair, my higher power is right here with me. And I don't have to be afraid of that. And I don't have to project and worry about that. Because I got a past and I've got a trend and I've got a track record that's not mine. It's not ours. It's my higher powers. I hope to be back down in the studio soon. One of these days, things will settle. Things will get organized. Things will work themselves through. Until then, this may be me. This may be us. This may be the best that I can do. And you know what? It's just fine. This is my best Papa ever location right now. This is the best I can do. And I don't have to do any better because if this is where I am, then this is where my higher power wants me to be. And if you're watching this, this is where your higher power wants you to be. I appreciate you tuning in. Please, if you get a chance, please click like, please subscribe. If you're not, please share this with the world. I hope that this finds you well. I hope this finds your family well. I hope that if you're struggling that you hold on and I hope that we can all do this together. But if nothing else, if nothing else, everything else is. Let's do this with our higher power. See you next week. Take care.